Hi, so this is going to be a little bit of a bonus material for the course and what I wanted to talk about is how to get information from your PSDs and then put it into your CSS code or your HTML because normally what happens is a designer will send you their PSD and then you take the information from that and then use it in your code so let's take a quick example let's use font sizes and also font family so just by pressing T I can select my text tool it's just over here and then I can just click on any of the text I want to learn about so I'm clicking on online portfolio here which is our little tagline I can see that I'm using Arial font and it's 18 points now that can easily be you know maybe Lucida Sans or any of the other fonts that are available so now let's go to the code and what we can see from here is that the background color which we'll look at in just a moment is C0 and the font family is Lucida Sans and Arial so like I said you can find out the font and the size from there now what we're looking at is actually this part here so what we want to do is we're just going to go to view source which is here and I'm in the Chrome browser which makes life very very easy and then I click on stylesheet.css which brings me here obviously you can open it in Dreamweaver or whatever editor that you're using so like I said we've got 18 points here and this is the header tagline and then the actual font is inherited from the body so we've got font 18 which we got from here and that tells us just here just the size let's take a look at the name now so click on name and we can see that's 72 pixels back to our CSS and you can see here font size 72 so that's how you get the font sizes and next we're going to look at the color now the color again is super easy all I have to do is we're going to go to I so press I for the eyedropper tool and then all I have to do is click on my design anywhere to find out the color we're interested right now in the background so I'm just going to click on the background and you can see that down here the foreground has changed so click on there and it will bring up your color picker and from there we can see that we're using the code C0 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 which is just a sort of a silver color and then like I said we're going to go into our code and that's where we would write it and this is the background color C0 C0 so if you have any colors you can simply find out by clicking using your eyedropper tool what it is let's take this this blue here for example I click once I click on here and then now I have my code good example here is, is the, uh, the footer at the bottom click on there and then we have our color there BEE -E 08E now let's go back to the code and just confirm that there so back down to the bottom here all the way to footer and we have background color BEE -E 08E now the next part is actually about gradients now in this first course we don't normally use gradients but it was uh, a special request from someone who took the course so we're happy to show you how to do it now let's just take a, an example of using a gradient for the background so I've just created a gradient here now I did that just using two colors so again I just picked one color then a second color in my picker here okay and then you just use the gradient tool and then all you do is you click and hold and pull down like that and you'll create a gradient alright so now if we want to put that into the code or if it was the PSD originally had the gradient we need to find these color codes and put them into something that will create a gradient CSS code so to do that we need these two colors so again back to the color picker pressing I we're going to click on the first part at the top and then we've got the color code D7 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 and at the bottom click on there and we have the color 909090 now one of the tools I love to use is a website called Colorzilla and Colorzilla is a great little program if you just click on here it will take you to the gradient producer now normally what I do is I just click on these colors and then I just delete them because we want to just do a linear gradient from one color to another I can obviously use some of the presets but we want our own to do that first of all I'm going to go here just click and then put in 
D7, D7, D7. Click OK. And then click on the end color, and then we put in the second color, which was 9090. Click OK, and then we have this beautiful gradient that I can literally just copy and paste and replace, for example, in what we're going to do now is the background. So I'd actually just copy and paste it, and I would replace this line here with the code from here. Very easy. And the great thing about that is we're not using a picture, and it means that our website will load faster. So give it a try. I'm sure you'll like it. So the next thing we're going to be looking at is margins. So let's take a look at the margins around the actual page itself. So if I just drag a line here, and I'm using the marquee tool, so you can just press that by pressing M. All right, I'm just going to grab a little bit like this, and then I'm just going to move this box over. Now you can see that it's the same size. Now what that means is that the margin on the left and right is the same. And we use something called margin auto when we're talking about the code. So let's have a look at that. The container is the CSS code that we've used for the white box. And here, we've got width of 740, but we've got a margin of auto there and 60 pixels above and below. So let's take a look at that. So that means we've got 60 pixels here and also 60 pixels down here. So you can use that in your CSS. Now let's take a look at padding. Now I'm going to zoom in for this one, and I'm just going to come over here. Now as I can see, there's a little bit of padding between the edge of the box and the actual content itself. So I need to know exactly how big this is. To do that, I'm going to go to Window and then Info. Now something that I always have is the ruler turned on, and you can turn that on by doing Command and R for a Mac, or Control and R for a PC. Once you've turned it on, please make sure that you've got it set to pixels. Right click, and you'll see that I've got it set to, to pixels. From there, again, I'm going to use my marquee tool, because that allows me to use this. Now the info panel, you can get from Windows, and then Info. Now, let's take a measurement. So I'm just going to go right to the edge, and just pull my box like this, and you can see that's exactly 30 pixels. And that goes all the way down. So if I go back to my code, I should see something like padding 30, and there it is. And that's all the way around. Okay? Oh, and look, we even have a box shadow. Let's have a look at that. So the box shadow is very, very easy to find as well. We do that using the selection tool, and that is accessible by pressing A. So click on the white box, and then what you'll see is the container has some styles applied to it. Open that up click on drop shadow and you'll see some of the figures here and the size there is 30 pixels and then what you can do again is just using the color picker you can find the color here and put that into your code so that's how you use padding and margin and also having a look at box shadows now just to finish off this uh, requested bonus material I want to talk to you about opacity. Now the opacity we haven't really used on this design, but let's say that we did. What we can do is I'm going to actually select uh, the logo and I'm going to change the opacity of that. So I just have to literally just press 8. Okay, so here we have 8. And what that means is it gives you 80% opacity. And that's something, again, you can put into your code. Let's take, for example, we did the background. So what we're going to do now is we've got the gradient, but I've also got a background of some like a wood texture. I'm going to put the gradient above the wood texture like this, and I'm again going to turn down the opacity. Let's make it at say about 20%. Okay? So from here you can see the, the opacity is used on there. And again, that is something that you can put into your code. Now if you wanted to use that in your actual code, all you have to do is go over to one of my favorite websites, w3schools.com, and you'll find it at forward slash CSS, CSS underscore image underscore transparency dot ASP. Now inside there, you'll see a very, very simple thing, which is opacity. Now, you do have two versions here. One is for modern browsers, and one is for IE8 or even earlier. 
So you can do things like um, hovers, uh, and also you can use this on backgrounds as well. So all you have to do is click on the item that you want to know about. It can be a logo or anything. You can see that this is 80%. And then you can use the image opacity CSS styling to make it the same as the PSD. So that's everything for this bonus material. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you've enjoyed the course itself. And we'd love to hear your reviews. Thanks. Bye.